Hi everyone and welcome to a quick video, well maybe 5-10 minute long. Um, I've just got a new, well I've had a new screen for a while now, a couple of weeks, but I've not had a chance to set it up in Photoshop yet. So if you remember, I said when you get a screen, you should let Photoshop know what your viewable area is, so that you can set it up and set it up in Photoshop so that when you're viewing your images, when you've cropped them, and you want to view the print size or the size that you, they're going to be on the web, that you can get an accurate look of what they're going to look like when you add the sharpening onto them and when you send them away for print. And I'm going to show you another really big advantage on doing this procedure. If you do this procedure, I'll show you how you can see what your noise level on your image is going to look like before you get it printed or before it comes back. So first things first, you'll need a tape measure. Now I have done the video before and I'm, gonna, I'm just doing it very quickly now. I'm going to measure the width of my viewable area, meaning from left to right, not from corner to corner, from left to right. And I've done that and it's 21.5 wide. And uh, uh, sorry, it's 20.5, so 20 and a half inch, and it's 11 and a half down, right? Um, I'm just going to just show you something, by the way, to let you know that I'm, I don't know if you're going to be able to hear this, but I'm just going to quickly show you something on my dump and on my training and on my sharpening images and on amount and radius. I just want to quickly show you that this isn't something that I've just made up. This is, uh, no, this is not it. Hang on. I'm just going to quickly show you that this is actually. I opened an image that's available Listen. For you who have access to these things. It's called screenresolution.tip. Now, if you don't have access to the image, no big deal, frankly, because you're going to be seeing it here big and beautiful. I'm oh, sorry. You're be seeing it here big and beautiful in the video. So I'm going to press Shift F to switch to the full screen view so that we can see all of this. I don't know if you can hear this and guy, but this guy, look how he's telling you to measure the width of the viewable area and which mine was 20.5 and the width down which was 11.5 and you can see I'm going to shut that off now that's a proper Adobe instructor by the way so don't anybody be watching this video and thinking John you talk out of your ass I don't talk out of my ass it's the truth and if you don't do it there's something seriously wrong in the head with you I'll repeat that again. There's something seriously wrong in your head if you do not do this. This is for a professional and for an amateur and for anybody to do. And not many people know about it. Not even photographers that have been working 10 years know about it. But it is a proper thing and it should be done. And so if you remember, right, sorry without sounding an ass, but I, I just really want people to do it because... When one of the reasons why I'm actually wanting people to do it is because it's it's to do with this when people zoom into... Medman, we spoke about the workflow and the JPEG and the RAW file. Well, I'm going to show you an image in a minute when I've set this up at 12 by 8 and I'm going to show you that it looks lovely with no noise reduction. But if I zoom into 100%, it's going to look pixelated. But that then proves the point of... Why do people just open images in Photoshop or Lightroom and decide to do all the editing when your image is at 100%? When 100% could be the... It could be huge. And you don't always need to worry about what it looks like at 100%. And this is my point. But anyway, let's go to a calculator. Um, have I got my calculator here? So, remember I measured my width. So, my screen resolution, by the way, is... I've already done this video, but I'm just going to quickly... In fact, I'm just going to tell you. My screen resolution is 1920 by 1080. So, I'll need to pump 1920. Shared between. That's my screen resolution. Width, and it was 20.5, wasn't it? And then if I remember on the video, I said that you look at the first two digits. Now, that mine's 93. Now, if you do this correct, you should end up with the same digit. You won't end up with all these numbers, but you should end up with 93 again. So let me go to 1080, which is because that's my down resolution. Shared between 11.5 equals 
93 again. So there you go, the magic's done. Right, and what I'm going to do for the laugh here is I'm going to open a RAW file shot ISO 6400, no editing done, with a D7000. And if we now go to 100% and look at the state, oops, sorry. If we, are we at 100% still? If we go look at this image at 100%, we can clearly see it's noisy as hell because it was shot at 100%. And I'm just going to leave the default noise rid Oh, sorry, I'm just going to actually close that again. I'm going to do that again. Let me just close that again because I want to actually open it up as a smart object, actually. So we shall do that again. If I hold my shift key, I can open it up as a smart object because I want to do this because then if I want to get back to the noise reduction and I want to do want to apply a bit because I decide that it, it, that when I've cropped it, it might look a little bit on the poo side, I can come and just whip straight into Adobe Camera Raw by doing that. And this is the only time I really use Camera Raw, by the way. Um, usually it'll be Lightroom. So now let's go into Photoshop to my preferences and go to Units and Rulers. Now... By default, that number is 72. And just for the laugh, I'm just going to crop this image. Well, not for the laugh. I don't know how I bloody say that, but I'm going to crop it at 12 by 8 Because that's what I print a lot of my wedding images at. 12 by 8 right? And let's just double-click that to accept. So now my image is uh, cropped at 12 by 8 Let's say it's ready for print. Now, I've not done any editing on it. We know this. But... If I now go to view print size, now if I look at that image, it's not measuring 12 by 8 on my screen. If I get my tape measure out and, I mean, I've got I've got them there anyway. If you see we're on 12 and it's not measuring 12 by 8. I don't think it is anyway, unless I've, it shouldn't be doing if the number's 72. Yeah, so it's not measuring 12 by 8. Um, so, and... I'll just prove that by just measuring it. No, it's showing when I measure the picture, it's showing 9 by 8, right? So it's not showing right. Um, so, oh, have I gone to view print size, by the way? Maybe that's why. Yeah, view print size. So now let me go pump the number in and set the number in properly and set it to 93 which is what we got when we measured it. It okay, now if I go view print size, watch the image. Because now, Photoshop knows what I am, um, basically I've told it what my viewable area is. Um, and if I measure that image now, or I go get an A4 piece of paper, if I go get an A4 piece of paper and measure it, it measures exactly 12 by 8 on screen because now photoshop knows my viewable area but i need to talk to you about something as well quickly i mean jesus i've gone into it before but you need to go under your performance and check that open tl is ticked and if you read it actually tell you a bit about open gl it's for accurate it's for accurate drawing basically you want it ticked now if you have a look at me zoom look at me zoom it's at 9.1 something 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 but that now, I can look at that image and I can see, I can see what that is going to look like now when it's printed. Because I'm looking at it on screen. And, I mean, I'd have to go a little bit nearer with my eyes because I'm, I'm sat a fair bit back. But And if I go, I can see a little bit of noise on his jacket. But I could print that dead easy and not do any noise removal whatsoever. ISO 6400. In fact, there's been no edit done to that image at all. Um. But let's say we did want to add a little bit of noise removal. But let's, uh, first of all, I'm going to zoom the image into 100%. Look at that, guys. Look at the state of that image. Look, look at it. Now, and that's what a lot of photographers do. They'd zoom that into 100% and go, oh, you, can't, you, you can't have that. It wants loads of noise removal doing on it. it that's not how it works. When you zo you're zooming in and you're doing stuff at 100%, let's just go back to view print size. 
that's how it's going to look on a piece of A4 paper because I've set my Photoshop up right. So I can use it now and I can gauge. I could probably add a bit of sharpening on that image because the photographer who shot it, it's a little bit soft. And to be fair, it is shot at 6400 as well. So that won't help things. Um, but it's shot at 6400 and, and there's no noise and move done. It could do with a bit of sharpening and it could also maybe it could do with an edit anyway. But let's just say I'm just going to... So that's now cropped and... I say I wanted to get rid of the bit of a bit of the noise because I've now cropped it and I'm viewing print size. I can probably just go to my noise and maybe just add, I don't know. I'll add 13. But I'll assure you, it doesn't need it really. And there you go. It's just updated that little bit of noise reduction there. Um, so that's done. I'm now going to leave it at the view print size now as well. I'm going to go to filter, um, I'm just going to sharpen it, but what I would do here on an IISO image is, let's just pump the radius up, get some real sharpening going on, and so, and then I would hold the alt key, and I don't know what I'm doing there, but just hang on, I would, Let me just turn that off. Say I'm going to add that, right? Um, let me open up my layers palette and flatten the image. Right, so we've now added some sharpening on, and it's still looking good at 12 by 8. Usually I don't. Usually I do my editing, and then on an on, and I usually I just add my sharpening at the end for print. If I'm archiving it, I don't really add much to it, but I'm just doing this just for the video. Right, so let's open now a filter. Because I wouldn't print this out colour. Because if you look at the colours, they're very bland. Because there ain't no exciting there. Right, I'm just going to go there for the video. There's no point messing around. Now let's flatten the image. Right, let's say now that image is ready to go. Now let's come into 100% again. Oops, that's 200. Look at state of it. Look at state of it. But I'll assure you, I've got this image in my wedding album. Let me go back to view print size. I've got this image in my wedding album and it looks crisp. I can see a little bit of noise on this guy's face, but to be fair, I can see that here. So there's an example. One, you can get accurate sharp, sharp images because when you hit view print size, you'll see your image will soften up and then you can sharpen it accordingly then. you Because you, you can see it on screen, get right close to it, your screen, like you were viewing a photograph and you're on and apply your sharpening. But you can also use it for noise as well. Do you know what I mean? In fact, if I remember correctly, this in my album hasn't got any noise removal done. Because I didn't need it. Because I've got my, my computer set up correctly. I've got my monitor set up correctly. So I know that um, I didn't have to do any. So let me just revert the image again. I should have a revert button here, Anna. Uh, for some reason I haven't got it. Um, yeah, revert image. Uh, yeah, continue. Oh no, we're not, we're not available. Oh, okay, can't revert it then. Uh, must be because it was a smart object. So yeah, if you look at that now... It's measuring 12 by 8 on screen because I've set it up correctly. It looks fantastic. Um, it's not as sharp as an ISO 100 shot, obviously, um, because it's, you know, it's just shot at 6400. Um, that's why I've took it to black and white. But you can see it looks great. But at 100%, these boys that are spewing shit out and saying uh, they're looking at 100% at the image, they think that that's the image, but it isn't. 100% is nowhere near... I mean, 100% could be, I don't know, 40 by 60 inches, you know. You can see this is cleanly out of the camera. It didn't even need any noise removal doing. But if you zoomed into 100%, which people tell you to do when you're doing your noise removal, it's a bit of bullshit, really. Because you'll remove all that noise at 100% because it'll look terrible at 100%. And you'll not crap out of your image. Set your monitor up correctly. Do what I've just told you to do, and you can. And then you can. What you the usual protocol is: edit your image. If you're archiving it, just that's fine. Don't worry about it. But if you're going to print it, edit it up to where you think it's nice. Then at the last thing, when you know you're going to print it, I'd crop it, and 
then go to view print size with everything and have a look at it and see does anything look out out of place when you've cropped it and you and you'll be able to see if it's going to look noisy you might decide well i can hardly fucking see noise sorry if it's wearing i can hardly see noise so i'm not going to do any i won't bother softening image up to pieces because i'm not going to see it i'm not going to see it and that's the thing and again I'm not spewing this out of my mouth. I've done this. I've tried it. I've tested it. And that little video that I showed you is a proper professional Adobe instructor. Do you know what I mean? He teaches in Adobe and he knows what he's on about. And as you can see, by putting that number from 72 to 93, now when I measure my image on the screen, when I view the print size, when I'd cropped it at A4, 12B8, it measured 12B8. At 72, it, it just measured 10 b somewhat. It just won't right, and that's what that number's for. Make sure open jail sticks. Thanks for watching. Get sharp images, and you'll find out you won't have to do them. As you can see, this raw file ain't got any noise removal done on it, and I printed it out A4. Thanks for watching. Please comment and subscribe. Mm -hmm.